hello and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today I'm going to finally be testing out the Arches watercolor paper. Now, I don't know if other watercolorists have this problem, but sometimes you buy a supply that seems a little bit too nice and you just let it sit and you're afraid to use it. Well, that happened to me. I bought a block of the Arches watercolor paper almost two years ago and it's been sitting in the closet waiting until I thought I was good enough to use it, and I'm finally done waiting. I don't know if I'll ever deem myself good enough, but I am really curious because there is a lot of hype around this Arches watercolor paper. The one that I purchased is 140 pound, and it's a 9 by 12 paper, and it's about $36 now if you were to buy it. I'm not sure how much it was when I bought it, because again, it was quite a while ago. For that, it comes with 20 sheets in this block format, which is nice because I don't actually have to tape it down, but I can tape it if I want to. Normally, I purchase the Canson XL, which is my favorite paper. It's also 140 pound, cold pressed, and it comes in packages of 30 sheets for 9 by 12, and it ranges between about 6 to $9, depending on where you buy it from, so you get a lot more for a lot less. Canson has been my go-to for quite a while, and I am really curious to see how it stacks up against the arches and if the arches is actually worth that huge price difference. In order to test this, I've done a couple things. The first is that I just painted in it, just to get a good feeling. I will show you a few different paintings I've done on this paper at the very end of this video, but the bulk of this is going to be showing my direct comparison paintings. In these, I did actually tape off my big block of paper into separate little sections so I would have small pieces, similar to how I do my little mini paintings. And then I painted two of the same paintings that I did on the Arches paper using the exact colors mixings. I did them at the same time, actually, on my Canson paper as well. Now, obviously, there's going to be a little variation just based on the way that I place pigment and things like that, but in general, these should have very similar effects, very similar pigmentation, and that's what I want to find out. With all of that in mind, I've been painting on these two in the background here, and you can see that the Arches paper, it does work better than I thought it would initially. The colors are super vibrant, things go on like an absolute dream. The colors are nice, I can get good gradients, I could even lift really well to get different clouds and different effects that I wanted to happen, so I am super happy with that. For the gradients and backgrounds on the Canson, you can see they work really well too, but the colors don't seem quite as vibrant, which I am really surprised by. I do kind of feel like I was having an off day with painting on the Canson, that maybe I was rushing it a little bit too much. So you might want to take that into consideration, but I don't think that fully explains why these colors look so much different on the different papers. Next up, when we're talking about layering, the layering works beautifully on the arches. I did notice that the arches dries a lot slower, and I do think that's just because of what the paper is made out of. So I'm not super familiar with having to wait quite as often, but I could use a hairdryer to actually dry it off and speed that up. I will just have to get to know the timing of this paper, I think, a little bit better in order to better utilize it. I have a few more things I want to talk about the Arches paper specifically, but I do want to jump kind of ahead and really address the Canson versus Arches part of this. The place where this arches really did seem to stand out was when I was building these layers of mountains. The more pigment I put on top of other layers, I was getting a little bit of streaking and separation with my Canson watercolor paper. Now, I don't always have a problem with this, so again, I think I was having a little bit of an off day. But I do sometimes struggle with that with this paper, and I thought it was all down to technique, and now I'm kind of thinking maybe the problem is split 50-50. Part of it's my fault, and maybe part of it is the paper. Because again, jumping ahead to some finished paintings, let's look at the end result of these two paintings between the Canson and the Arches. You can see how much extra separation there is on the Canson ones, and how the colors aren't as vibrant and they don't kind of stack up as nice. I can't quite explain this. I mean, obviously, the Arches is better at absorbing the pigment and the colors, so kudos to them. 
but I was genuinely surprised at the difference. The final thing I was concerned about with the arches, and I'm still not entirely there with it, is things like blooming effects. I really like to use some of those in my foregrounds, and I struggled a little bit to get this to happen, but I think that again comes back down to that timing issue where this paper dries a lot slower than the one I'm typically used to, so I think I need to be a little more patient and learn the general timing of this, which um, is just something I need to work on, not that the paper needs to work on. In addition to all of the other benefits I've kind of talked about this paper with, the other funny thing that I did not expect was that I could remove this tape without using a hairdryer. It came off super easily. I wasn't concerned about ripping this at all as I was pulling this off. I'm sure it can still possibly happen, but I do use a pretty low adhesive grade masking tape and even though it's not the best masking tape on my Canson, I have to treat it with a hairdryer in order to release that adhesive to get it off. Otherwise things really rip and um, it's kind of scary to take the tape off. This, it, I didn't have any bleeding underneath the tape and I could just take it off and it, it worked great. I don't, I don't know, I was really surprised by that. So ultimately here are the three main things I did with this Arches paper so far. I did kind of just a basic landscape. I did another one based on the devil's backbone here. And then I did all these little mini ones so that I could really test out a whole bunch of different effects on it at once and kind of see them side by side. And again, let's look at the review between the Canson and this. And I do think there's a clear winner here. It is still really pricey for me, so I'm not entirely sure if I will switch over, but I'm kind of getting the hunch that I'm going to be adding more money in my budget for paper specifically because of how impressed I was with this. It far exceeded my expectations, and I didn't think there'd be any way I could justify spending over a dollar on a single sheet of paper for each one of these. So kudos to Arches for making a paper that really does justify such an insane price point. I don't, I don't know if I'll change over it for my actual everyday practice because that is a lot of money, but I do think that the price point is justified. It was nice enough to consider this to be worth that much more than something like the Canson watercolor paper. What do you think? Have you tried Arches or Canson? Let me know what your favorite paper brand is down below. I'm super curious to try out some other ones and I'd love some suggestions. If you wanna see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just wanna see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos and I hope that you have a magically creative day.